Now, I know I show you guys a lot of card tricks. So today I'm going to show you something a little different. It's actually a spoon trick. Now, don't think for a second this is some kind of special spoon that's going to suddenly vanish and then a moment later come back because this spoon is not that kind of spoon. You lucky little freaks. This is something I've been keeping to myself for a long, long time, okay? Because if you're familiar with my work, you know I do a couple of, um, a couple of tricks with spoons. I do a bending spoon thing. I also do a ring and spoon trick. I do a few things. And years ago, I thought there's gotta be some way to very, very quickly produce a spoon out of nowhere. And the reason I think this is so valuable to share with you guys and I decided to finally share it is I'm gonna show you a principle first. You can use it with markers. You can use it with straws, use it with spoons, even forks. Oh yes. Um, the key here is an opening trick that takes seconds and instantly establishes you as not Uncle Fred with the card tricks, right? You, all magicians, anybody who's interested in magic and wants to perform even a little bit with people should have in their arsenal at least one or two instant magic tricks. Something in the first 10 seconds you can get people to go <laughs> You want that, you need that. Because once you establish that, it's all downhill. You want to establish that what you do is impossible and that they should watch you very carefully right off the top. So I'm gonna show you the secret to this. On this video, we're also gonna announce the winners of last week's, what was it, do I even have it here? I do. We're gonna announce uh, all the winners from last week's X Factor um, competition. Contest, yeah, you all left a whole bunch of comments on last week's video. I'm gonna announce the winners on this video. And there's a brand new question of the week because this week, you're gonna have a chance to leave a com comment here and maybe win one of my brand new Going, going, gone card tricks. It's based, uh, based on a thing I was working around for years, then I found a, a way to actually get more magic out of it now. And it comes with some special cards. It's called Going, Going, Gone. You can only find that on my merchandise site, the Sankey Magic thing. And here's the question, ready? Since today we're doing something with a spoon, before I show you exactly how this is done, the question of the week is, what's your favorite thing to eat with a spoon? Not a fork not a baseball glove, a spoon. So what is your favorite thing to eat with a spoon? Leave a comment down below and you'll be automatically entered in the contest for your chance to win one of 12 of my brand new card trick, Going, Going, Gone. What I have here is I've cut a little slot. Now I want you to see, got the flap, okay? So this is facing you now with the uh, half moon there and the spot where I've cut, and it took me a while to work this out, is on this corner, okay? and it's in the bottom half, okay? And what I've done is I've cut a little slot out of there, just a bit bigger than the end of the spoon, all right? And then I put some duct tape, some really heavy duty tape there, because this is gonna be used again and again and again, uh, and uh, I wanna make sure that it's not gonna start to tear and that kind of thing. Now, if you're gonna use the spoon, which is such a great contrast between the card case and the spoon, this is being put in there, you're slipping it down through the bottom, okay? And I've found that if it's facing me uh, this way, it tends to, when it's facing this way, this little top of it tends to start to open the case too early, I don't want that. So I have this facing you, okay, the bowl is facing you, slip down here in the bottom, all right? Like this, I close the case over it, and I've even sometimes, so isn't that weird, I've even sometimes, I uh, made sure that this is pushed. The m you want it up in the corner, all the way up, because you don't want it out here, or that's more for you to conceal in your hand. Push it all the way up there. I've sometimes even had it resting in my case and put the tiniest little bit of tape there, so I know that whatever is happening in my case, this is gonna remain. Now, what's the advantage of using those little things, like a little bit of tape? What that does is it means I can reach into my case, or even my back pocket, I've done this, with again, a little bit of tape, and I can be confident. I don't have to think twice. I don't have to hesitate. I can grab it and know. And that knowledge will change your performance dramatically, okay? So this is in my case like this, or even lying in my back pocket, and I grab it and I come up. I love it. I love when something can be a perfect fit of an organ, I mean, this is exactly how I'd hold it normally, okay? And you're here and I don't necessarily come flat to them, I angle it slightly just to make sure, and both hands move together. Now I know you've probably seen a bunch of card tricks, and I'm in. I know you've probably seen a bunch of card tricks. And I come here, so, and as I go from a bunch of, so instead I'm gonna show you a trick with a spoon. 
Now he's seeing a bunch of card tricks. So instead, and I come here, they have no idea what's happening. Only now. And it's too late. It's already totally inside the case. So I don't want to go, what you don't want to do is time it. And you can see where I'm going here. I don't want to do, and the moment it comes out here, I go, ha, <laughs> relief. Okay, you don't want it, because that can, on an unconscious level, give away the method. So instead, this is the kind of thing where I slowly, like the opening of a flower, for lack of a better term, I slowly reveal it. So I'm here, I'm here, and as it comes out, maybe I'll loosen the pinky down there, and then, and only about here when they both move in. Now both hands, and you really let this register. If you go too quickly, if people have had a drink or two, they won't really think, well, okay, so I guess you had the spoon in the case. They won't even realize the impossibility of it. So it's boom like that, let that register, okay? Gets a lovely reaction, there's nothing for them to see. This goes in your pocket, you can put this on. Nobody thinks it's a gimmicked case. How could that, how, is it made from rubber? How is this hidden in there? So you get rid of that and you're into this. Now you can end there. If you, have a, you know, here, I bet you want this for your drink and you can go on another trick, okay? If, or a marker, you can pull out the marker. But in this case, I went into the flip stick move by Flip the Magician, right? And I'm doing it with a spoon, slightly different. I just wanted to show you what I do with this. Tap here. And the structure on this is, I always say, now this is an ordinary spoon. I don't want you to think this is some sort of vanishing spoon and a late, moment later it's gonna come back. Now, this is almost broader theatrical, almost stage magic technique. Uh, I'm using in a close-up setting and I really want to make it pronounced because it's easy for you and I, when it's vanished, it's easy for you and I to rush this. If it's only gone for a second, you bring it back quickly, they're like, they won't even notice. They're looking at you, they're looking around, they're still thinking about this. So I have found, I really have to make sure that when I say this is an ordinary spoon, it's not the kind of spoon that's gonna suddenly vanish. I have to pause a beat, okay, before I reproduce it. You need to pause. So I really worked on bringing my head down, my arms come back, slightly exaggerated to make sure when I'm working in a bar or restaurant, this registers. The technique I'm using, okay? The technique with all, the flip stick is all about applying a lot of pressure, okay? Because I'm gonna flip this back behind the hand and you'll find the grip is gonna be, mostly the middle finger is gonna be pulling this and between. It's really exquisite. If you've tried this with a pencil or a wand, it's good. The spoon feels even better, okay, because this is so slim. So you're here, two fingers, thumb, two fingers, thumb, okay? And I'm found that you don't want to go from here. You want to go from here. Have this raised slightly. It'll pivot much nicer behind the hand. And the reason I'm able to get it to fly back so quickly, so quickly, with very little finger action is because I'm applying pressure with my two fingers and thumb against the bowl, okay? But my thumb and fingers here are resisting. So because I've got that pressure built up, when they do, when the thumb does let it fly, it flies very quickly behind, okay? So the exposed view is here, here, and I'm going to pivot it back so it lines up. From here, look how quickly it's gonna fly back. Thanks, Chris. So we're here. It's gonna fly back here. Now, let's come forward again. If I just do it like this, and this hand does this, and they both make, I mean, it, it's easy for people to get a sense of where it was, or if I, I'm here and I let one hand drop. That's why the two hands need to perfectly mirror each other. And once I get it pivoted back, I then extend my finger, okay? And my thumb, because I want to look like, and I open these two. And it's just, and sometimes because people are on my far left, note that the angle here, if I've got it, not, nobody can see. There's nothing to see here. Where you're gonna see it is from the far left, right? So if I've got an audience here, I'll often do this and turn to somebody. Now I've covered, I mean, look, I have to come all the way around my body too. This action of pulling back emphasizes the vanish, covers the mirroring action, and makes it even, now the spoon rather than being out here for people to see on my far left, when I pull back here, my chest and shoulders are covering some of the action too. So I've really, <laughs> I have no life, I've really thought this through. The vanish is here, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. Now I played with different reproductions. I played with this one, Ooh. 
where you just sort of grab it and it's suddenly out of the air. But I miss that half the time and it seems a bit, so I just take it from here. Move forward and spin. So it starts with the left finger, all right? Here, here, I move forward and spin. And again, you don't want to get caught reaching over here with this hand, okay? Everything's got to be balanced. So they have no idea where, and just when they're thinking, where's the spoon? Where's the, it's back. Here are the names of the 12 lucky sons of guns who won my brand new trick, X Factor. It's a mentalism trick. It's a prediction trick involving some cool four color printed globes. Uh, and you predict which city in the entire world somebody truly, freely chooses. It's very cool. So these are the 12 of you who won X Factor. You ready? Brannigan Law. There's a cool name. I wish I had that name. Brannigan Law, Leo Lizard. Yes, indeed. Sid the Magician, Jacob Fogg with two Gs. I think if your last name is Fogg, there should be two Gs. I'm just going to say it. Then David Del Papa. You won. David Del Papa, uh, Indio Rodriguez, Sheila McDonald, Paul O'Shaughnessy, Paul O'Shaughnessy, Puff Daddy Tricks. Boom! You won. Ian Daniels, Morgan Magic, and Ted Nelson. If I just said your name, make sure to contact my team. You can do it. Just send an email to contact at sankeymagic.com. And somebody on my staff who isn't too drunk, they'll make sure if you include your real name and your shipping address, we will ship out to you your prize of one of the 12 X Factor. Congratulations. And don't forget to leave a comment and tell me, and this is your chance to automatically be entered into the contest to win one of my 12 Going, Going, Gone card tricks. Leave a comment down below and tell me what is one of your favorite things to eat with a spoon, okay? Not a slingshot, not some sort of bloody claw from a velociraptor, but with a spoon, what's one of your favorite things to eat? Leave a comment down below. If you like this trick, please subscribe to my channel, okay? I'm now pushing for 400,000, so please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I just taped a bunch of new stuff. It's all coming very soon over the holidays. I think you're gonna get a big kick out of some of the new stuff. So subscribe to the channel and also uh, sign up for my free magic newsletter. About once a week, sometimes twice a week, I fire up my newsletter. And in the newsletter, there's a bunch of stuff. There's some psychology tips, performance tips, uh, some new product news and discounts also included in there, some new product stuff. Uh, and also some stories from recent gigs I've had. It's totally free. The link's down below. And uh, if you forget the link, you can just go to sankeymagic.com. At the bottom of the homepage, there's a big sign up. Sign up for free. Get my newsletter coming to you every single week. And I think take your understanding of magic and your own performances to that next level. Thank you. And it's not a special spoon, okay? I don't want you thinking this is a sort of spoon that's going to suddenly vanish. And whoa, the flash on that must have been awesome.